So let me ask you this question. Have you ever had anybody come up to you and you're just, you're just having a conversation and you ask them, hey, how you doing? And they say, oh, you know, living the dream. How do you respond to that? I mean, you know, scratch my head because, okay, well, whose dream is it? Is it your dream? Is it somebody else's dream? Your parents' dream? Society's dream? And when does that dream become a nightmare? Because think about it, a nightmare is a dream too, right? I'm one of the lucky people. I've had a chance to live and work in my career. Not everybody does that, but I've been a broadcaster for almost 20 years, and I love it. And I've had some fantastic opportunities. But as of late, I've been doing some soul searching, and I, and I realized that one of the things, w when you actually do soul searching, you realize some scary things about yourself, to be quite honest. But I realized that I had a problem. And on the Mo Monday stage tonight, I'd like to confess to you because there's no better place than in front of 40 people for a confessional, right? But I have discovered I'm a liar. That's it. I'm a liar. It's out. I am a liar. And I was trying to figure out, okay, well, how did this lying thing begin? Where did it all begin? Where did this, where did it come from? And I was like, uh, again, soul searching. So I discovered that my inception into lying, I'm sure it started when I was a kid. I grew up in a fairly normal household, as normal as my household could be. And you probably have family like that too. But, but I grew up in a fairly normal household, two loving parents. I had an, uh, an older brother, a younger brother. My younger brother didn't hang out with very much. He was eight years younger. But my older brother, we did everything together. We would play together. We would do things in the backyard. We would dig, dig, d do everything, everything, absolutely everything together. I even learned from my older brother what not to do to piss my parents off. Anybody have an older brother, older sibling? Did you learn a lot from them? <laughs> my older brother, great guy, but he was incapable of being able to wiggle himself out of trouble. He could get into trouble, no problem, but he could not get out of it once he got into it. So for example, my older brother would break curfew. Anybody break curfew ever? <laughs> Brandon, have you ever done anything that wasn't against the grain? That's what I want to know. <laughs> okay. But no, he would break curfew. And my dad, shift worker, my dad would wait up for him. And of course, as soon as my brother came in the door, my dad would say those famous words, why are you? You guys have done this before, haven't you? And again, my brother could have said anything, would say something like, I don't know, I was at Wayne's. To which there was always a follow-up question from my father, and that question would be, why didn't you? You guys are good at this. <laughs> now again, my brother, my brother could have thought up anything, anything to wiggle his way out of this one. But he would say something like, I don't know, didn't want to. <laughs> now, you got to understand my dad. Worked in a factory, spent over 30 years at DeFasco. He was exposed to a lot of colorful language, shall we say. He never swore at us kids, never. But he was very, he would come up with some amazing phrasing when he was disciplining my brother. He would say something like, I don't care. If Wayne's mother is about to give birth on the kitchen table and they need you to help deliver the baby, you call. And then he'd get grounded. Of course he'd get grounded. But I'm, I'm 10, 11, 12 years old. I'm laying in bed. I'm listening to this. And I'm thinking, I do not ever, ever want to experience the wrath of my father. I would rather call down the wrath of God than have to experience the wrath of my father. So I think that's where it began. That's where I learned how to lie. Because whereas my brother couldn't get out of trouble, I could. 
Because when I would come home late, I would say something like, oh, Dad, sorry I'm late. I was going to call, but, you know, Jeremy's mother was about to give birth on the kitchen table. And, you know, the lines must have been down or Mom was on the phone or something. It will never happen again. So I got really good at lying. I could lie to anyone. I could lie to parents, friends, other family members, teachers. The only teacher I couldn't lie to was Russ Elman. Russ Elman taught media law in college. Thrilling subject. He would get so passionate and excited in his speaking that he would, he would get so passionate about media law that this bead of sweat would build up in the corner of his mouth and it would get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger as he's talking media law, to which you almost wanted to say, oh, Russ, please take a tissue and give it a wipe. But he's the only one I couldn't lie to. You couldn't lie to Russ Elman, ever. Nobody could. And by the way, Russ Elman, if, I don't know, if, uh, oh, I don't know, Kelly Leach and um, Mr. Bean had a love child, it would be in the form of Russ Elman. That, that's, that's who that would be. <laughs> So I learned how to lie to everyone, every single person. Later on, I could lie to my all, you know, all of my all of my colleagues. I could lie to, oh, I could lie to my bosses. I could lie, I could lie to everybody. But you know what happens when you really get good at lying? Your lies become the truth. And when your lies become the truth you tend to lose sight of what reality really looks like. Two of the biggest lies I ever told myself in my entire life, number one, was that if I told my parents, if I came out of the closet, that they would disown me and that my family would completely not welcome me ever again big lie. I remember what the day, <laughs> the day it happened, actually. My, I, you know, my, I, I'd been... Um, seeing someone and it, it didn't work out, was single for four months and was going through depression. I had to tell someone, who do you tell when you're going through things like that? Your parents. So I eventually, I eventually did. And I, and I remember the moment when I went and told my parents. My parents had this kitchen table. My dad made it out of a wagon wheel with the hub still in. Why the hub? I don't know. Why he didn't cover it over? I don't know. But anyways, the hub's still there. So I'm sharing this with him. I'm pouring out my heart. And he's just standing there looking at this hub like he always did. He, was a, he, he would always look away. But he's staring at this hub, and as he's doing that, he's saying, yep, yeah, we've known for a while. What? <laughs> but then he looked up from that stare that he was so good at. He looked up and he said, but you're still my son, and we still love you. It's funny, the last time I told that, nobody clapped. <laughs> nobody laughed either. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but no, seriously, he, so, so that was something I didn't have to lie about anymore, and it felt good not lying, but it also still felt good a little bit lying. The second biggest lie I told myself was in August of 2010, August the 18th to be exact. It was the hottest day, I think, on record. Probably the same temperature it is in this room tonight. It was the hottest day on record. I remember because I wore shorts to the radio station. We weren't allowed to wear shorts at work, but I said, I'm the morning host. What are they going to do? <laughs> Kick me out by 1030 when they arrive and I'm leaving? Okay. But I said, what are they going to do? Fire me? At 1030, I got called into the new boss's office to be told that, they were, that the station was going in a different direction. I was no longer needed. You're fired at the swipe of somebody else's pen writing on the pages of my life, I went from having a fantastic career to feeling like I had nothing at all. And because I was so good at this lying thing, I tried to convince myself that I wasn't worthy of anything better, that I was a failure, that I was washed up, and that there was nothing else out there for me. That's it, I was done. I even tried to convince my spouse that he was better off with somebody else. He told me I was full of, well, maybe I shouldn't tell you what, I, what he told me I was full of, but anyways, <laughs> he convinced me otherwise, but he also convinced me that, you know what, 
it's not the end of the world and that something better was on the horizon and something better was because that's when I started to meet other people like myself who had been displaced and who needed just an opportunity. So I created my own opportunity to help people like that by becoming a coach and a trainer. And I empower people to find their voice. That's what I do. That's what I love to do. And in doing so, Life is great. Life is great. fantastic. So there's huge opportunities out there for me. And that's the truth. That's what I'm telling myself now. I now live in truth all the time. It's so much better to live in truth, isn't it? Little bare face lies every now and again. Okay, if you're trying to get out of a ticket. Okay. But no, seriously, it feels so good to be able to tell the truth. And since I've started doing that, life has turned around like I never thought imaginable. Unbelievable things are happening. I never thought I'd own a house six years ago. We now own a house. Never thought I'd own a boat. I now own a boat. I live in a cottage country. It's fantastic. Life is great because I made the decision to stop lying. And when you stop lying and you live in truth, that's where the magic is. So live your passion and live in truth and enjoy that magical ride.